All right, so we recently took a look at the GMK Tech M7 Pro. We took a look at it running some games on Windows and we talked about the interesting Oculink feature on it. But what I really want to do with this system right now is I want to turn it into a Linux Steam console. So the way we're gonna be doing that is by using a distro called Bazit or Bazite. I'm not really 100% sure how it's pronounced, but what this distro is meant to do is make the Linux gaming experience as seamless as possible. See, there's been some pretty major developments over the last few years in terms of gaming on Linux thanks to Valve over here and everything they've done with the Steam Deck. So what Bazit or Bazit is trying to accomplish is to take a lot of the major developments that Valve has done for the Steam Deck and kind of try to translate it towards a more universal experience. And while there have been multiple different distros that have tried to make the whole Linux gaming experience better using a lot of what Valve has already done, Bazit ends up being essentially the one that has done it the best, at least from what I have experienced on other systems. This is going to be the first time that I've fully installed it on a mini PC though, so I'm curious what the experience is going to be like. Now this isn't a top of the line mini PC by any means, though it's still really powerful considering it's a Ryzen 9 6950H. So again, while it's not the most recent generation of APUs, it's at this point two generations old, it's still a pretty decent system and the perfect spot where I want to see if you could make a $350 console out of this little thing right here. But first and foremost, we do have to get Linux installed on here. So we're gonna get my trusty flash drive here with all of the ISOs that I tend to use. And we're gonna get it in here and run through the entire install process. And so here we are on Bazite's website and immediately it tells you that this is powered by Fedora, which is great to see because I personally really enjoy the Fedora distro, though I mainly have been using Nabara for the last couple of years just because of the fact that immediately as soon as you install it, you can get all of the multimedia stuff that you need to actually make Linux usable for most people. But the fact that this is starting off with a Fedora base is great to see. And of course, they actually do have different desktop environments depending on what you like to use personally i'm a kde user so that's where i'm going to go for that and of course there's a bunch of information here in terms of what kind of games you can play this isn't just steam games the big thing that they want to emphasize is the fact that it's pretty much designed to work with practically games from any one of the storefronts out there you can do ea you can do epic you can do gog even the rockstar game launcher which i'm very curious about because rockstar recently implemented an anti-cheat onto G. GTA 5 that seem to have broken compatibility with Linux, so I'm curious to see how this is going to play with both Red Dead Redemption 2 and GTA 5. But it also claims support for Ubisoft Connect and even your dad's old CDs. So I'm definitely curious to see just how much of this we can actually do. But of course, if we click on the download button, it'll bring us all the way down here and you can pretty much choose what exactly you want. The so hardware wise, you could either go desktop or home theater PC. I'm actually very curious to try out the home theater PC because I would love for this system to essentially operate as kind of a console type of experience. So we're going to go with that. And of course, the GPU is AMD. In terms of desktop environment, they do have KDE. They have GNOME. I'm going to go with KDE since that's my preferred one, but you could pretty much choose whatever you want here. And I do actually want this to start in Steam gaming mode because again, we're trying to make this into a overall console experience. And of course, if you're ultra paranoid yourself, you can actually build this thing yourself. They do have a hardware compatibility section so you can see exactly what you need for this. Keep in mind though, that if you're trying to use Steam gaming mode where it auto boots into that, there are some limitations in terms of the hardware hardware that you can use. So after booting into the ISO for it and running through the entire install process, it's a pretty basic Linux install process where you're just making your user account, choosing your region, and pretty much all of that. So I didn't really record any of that, but here you can see it's running through the install process. And do keep in mind that it does take a little while for this entire process to run, just depending on the exact hardware that you have. But it did take more than 10 minutes for this to actually install on this system. So keep in mind, it might take a little while just 
be patient. It's doing its thing. Thankfully, it does have the indicator here where you're going to see the progress bar. You're going to see that things are working fine. Nothing has crashed yet. So during the first boot up, it's pretty much just going to ask you to set things like your language, your region, and all the usual stuff in terms of a setup. And then Steam is essentially doing some updates. Keep in mind, though, that as I was doing this, I realized that I couldn't connect my Bluetooth controller because it immediately went to this screen. It didn't really give me an option at all to pair anything with it. Now, if you plug in your controller over a USB, you can actually control all of this interface with a controller. But if you don't have a wire for your controller, then you're pretty much stuck using a mouse and keyboard. Kind of a downside considering that we did want this to be essentially a console type replacement unit. And immediately, as soon as you have to pull out the mouse and keyboard, that kind of defeats a lot of that. But still, we'll let all of this updating happen and then we'll jump right back in. And here we are booted into the Steam gaming mode overlay. It pretty much is just acting like you're on a Steam deck right now. And here you can see my full game library. We can pretty much go through the process of installing some games on here but this is the easy part it's easy to install steam games and get them to work on linux at this point at least for a good majority of the titles that you're realistically going to try to play what i really want to know is how these extra game store libraries are really going to work on here and for that we're going to have to use the heroic launcher see the heroic launcher is essentially an open source version of a launcher for both the epic game store your amazon game library and gog now I'm signed into both my GOG and Epic accounts right here in the Heroic Launcher and I've never used this launcher. But I can actually see my entire library on both of these stores and I do want to get games installed from both libraries just to see how this is going to play out. Because like I said, the games from Steam, that's the easy part. What I want to know is if we're going to be able to utilize all of these games properly and I do also want to see if GTA 5 will run on here with the online mode. So I'm just going to run through and install some games. It's not going to be a large amount. I just want to see if this is going to function properly. So jumping right on into the Steam games that I got installed here, we have Monster Hunter Rise, where I've recently been playing through the expansion for it. And as you can see, it runs absolutely perfectly fine here with the average graphics settings. This really just runs like a dream on all mini PCs. It makes sense. It's a game that was originally released on the Nintendo Switch, and its PC port was actually pretty fantastic. In general, it's fully playable and I really didn't run into any issues at all while playing it. And luckily we are able to utilize the Steam built-in overlay for the performance numbers here. And as you can see, everything is running perfectly. We are utilizing a good amount of TDP here, but the results that we're getting out of it is pretty fantastic. But like I said, the Steam games are the easy part. This is something that pretty much every distro that copies what Valve has done has been able to do pretty well, whether it's Chimera OS, Nabara Linux, or Hollow ISO, they all pretty much handle this stuff pretty perfectly. So we're going to jump right on into one that I am the most curious about, and that is Red Dead Redemption 2, since we have to use the Rockstar Launcher. And I'm actually really impressed to see that Red Dead ran really well on here. It wasn't difficult at all to get this to work. All I really had to do was launch the game. It brought up the launcher. I had to just sign in. Of course, I did have to use a mouse and keyboard, mostly because the built-in on-screen keyboard is kind of brutal to use. But once I signed in, everything worked perfectly fine. I was able to run the benchmark multiple times, and I really didn't run into any issues whatsoever. And it gave me about the same level of performance as I would expect to get on Windows. So in general, this was a really nice result but of course we still need to check the major one and that is gta 5 and that one i'm also interested in because i don't own gta 5 on steam i actually got it on epic now, i didn't pay for it it was back when epic was giving that away for free and that's pretty much the only place that i have gta 5 so i'm curious to see how the heroic launcher will handle the whole sign-in process so now that we've tried out all the easy mode games let's move over to the stuff that really interests me Okay, so immediately with GTA 5, 
I cannot access the online portion. I get the advertisement for the online, but I actually cannot gain access to it. Another thing is that when I load into the actual game, I run into a consistent problem of my screen flashing black. It uh, pretty much makes it unusable. I really don't know what this is, and this was a problem that I was having with every game that I was launching off of the Heroic Launcher. Didn't matter whether it was an epic game or if it was a GOG game, this was just a consistent problem. And I was also running into another issue that becomes very apparent if we jump over to Cyberpunk. Here, just in the settings menu for Cyberpunk, I'm trying to change settings here, and you'll see that the input is changing between a controller and a keyboard, like, instantaneously. And also, the keys that it says for a controller to adjust anything are not mapped correctly. For example, it says left trigger to move a setting to the left, but when I do that, all it actually tries to do is go back to the previous menu screen. So the keys are all messed up in terms of their mapping, and it's practically impossible to do anything here because of the fact that it is rapidly changing input types. It's acting as if a keyboard is plugged in and trying to override what the controller is doing. Keep in mind that I also did un unplug the mouse and the keyboard and only used a controller and this was still happening so it wasn't like there was a key stuck on my keyboard or anything like that literally without a keyboard plugged in this was still a consistent problem that was happening. Once I fought the game enough to set the settings to the lowest and used FSR 3.0 with the lowest graphics settings for it to get the best results, the performance was decent enough, but again, this is just the built-in benchmark. Actually trying to play the game is impossible because of that input issue that I'm having here, and I'm not 100% sure what the problem is there. It really becomes very apparent when I tried to also play Horizon Zero Dawn, which is another Another game that I have on Epic. Once I made it past the brutally long unskippable cutscene that this game has when you first launch it, I get to this screen here and I can't do anything. You can see again the input is rapidly changing between the two options, between a controller and a mouse and keyboard, and none of the inputs are actually registering at all. This pretty much made it impossible to play any game that I launched from the Heroic Launcher, and again I don't know what the problem is there. I'm sure if I looked into it I could find some solution or or something like that but the whole idea here was to make a console replacement system and if you have to mess around with pretty much anything you kind of defeat the purpose of all of this so i understand linux users out there if you have a very simple solution for this and i'm somehow in the wrong for messing this up i get that but the whole idea was let's make a console and this is not a console experience and it's disappointing to see because again everything it runs great on windows and and keep in mind, you're probably going to say, oh, well, try Wine, try Proton, try Proton GE, try Wine GE. I tried everything. They all kept having this problem with the Heroic Launcher. The only way I could actually get this to even function for a couple of seconds was to unplug my controller and plug it back in. And it would work for about two to three seconds, and then I would lose input again. So playing anything from the Heroic Launcher was pretty much impossible. In fact, GTA 5 was the most playable experience, and that was just because I could actually input anything without the game freaking out but the screen kept flashing black every few seconds so it was kind of just unusable as well it actually wasn't every few seconds it was more like it would go like 20 30 seconds without anything and then it would just happen again and you really don't know how long it would take for things to come back so in both situations, it was essentially just impossible to play anything. And I genuinely don't know what the problem is there, but it was a consistent problem across all of the games that I tried on the Heroic Launcher. Well, that ended up being kind of a disappointment. I don't particularly hate Bazite or anything like that. The overall installation experience and setup was actually extremely easy, very straightforward, and something that a lot of Linux distros really seem to struggle with. The biggest disappointment really was just the fact that the Heroic Launcher 
wasn't working properly for me. I really don't know what I have to do to fix that. I didn't really delve too deep into that because I really wanted this to be just a setup and go kind of experience and that really wasn't the case. You might need to just mess around with a few things to get that to work properly. I never really tried the Heroic Launcher at all on any of the handhelds that I've tested Bazite on, so I'm not 100% sure if this is just a universal experience that a lot of people have been having recently or anything like that. But again, we are still in the position where you can't just install this on any system and expect it to all work properly. So Linux for gaming still has a little ways to go, but there has been some major progress. And if all of your gaming is just done on Steam, it's pretty much there for you. See, I've tested out a lot of the games that Steam marks as not really Steam Deck ready, and a lot of them just seem to work. At most, you might need a mouse and keyboard to get things up and running, but practically every game that I've ever tried that natively supports a controller seems to work perfectly fine. So this, this is pretty much as good as it gets when it comes to using Steam, but so far it seems like the Heroic Launcher, it's just not there yet. I would love to know what your experience has been with using Bazite on a mini PC. If you've run into any similar issues to this, or if there's just a simple fix to it, I would like to get that to just work properly. But for this video, the main goal was again to just make a console replacement, and this just did not hit the mark for that. But anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next one.